we have everything set up and actually now that we have done this I don't know if you can see this let me take this the the edges out I'm not sure if you can see it more but the in here it is kind of more bright than on the back and that's exactly the effect that I was looking for um, let me see if we change the view then that side is going to be actually darker than in here so in general um, we have the effect that we wanted let me check how this is working out we have this the borders that I wanted and in here in the border of the pockets what I want to do is actually let me select one of the here I wanted to select this around well I don't want the whole thing so I have to deselect this in here and that I just want those around check that I'm not selecting anything else here it is here so I want to extrude them just a touch let me see that extrude not that much please maybe point 15 is gonna be fine maybe too high no let me see that yeah let me put it down point one is okay let me leave it that way convert to edge let me see here and those edges well without the ones in the middle well what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna select this edge this edge and loop see that worked fine this edge this one in here let me grab the face the edge faces and loop I make sure that I'm getting what I want and what I'm gonna do with those is that I'm gonna chamfer them up until I get nothing it seems to be that I'm not getting what I want oh hold on I am so here chamfer amount yeah the things that it was too much I did not see it and then adding segments and that way we have this roundness I believe it is cool yeah maybe a little bit more of a mounting here they're overlapping a little bit so I'm gonna leave it in seven let me put this in five maybe that's okay and when I see OK, let me should turn off this in here and this in here. Let me see. Yeah, I believe that is fine. This kind of this. Um, I try to make this roundness in here, and I have to do the same on the other side. So let me select one edge and just simply zoom in. That will help me out little bit loop check that I have what I need chamfer hit OK and I believe that is fine yep later on we're gonna play with the lights a little bit more you can see that this particular black rubber thing actually gets the light and actually reflects it a little bit so that's exactly what I wanted in this case I wanted it to reflect a little bit in there but I don't think that is a big issue we're not having any anything bad from it so let's turn on the symmetry again just to make sure aha uh -huh, they are turned on things that I mean editable poly here so, um, as you can see, we have everything almost set up. Let's dive into the the stars in here. This is quite simple. Again, that's the cool part about working just in one quarter of the table that you do something in here and you have it for the whole table. So, I'm gonna make it very simple, very very simple. And in some ways, I'm gonna cheat a little bit in here because. Um, instead of actually going and 
adding that to the to the model itself what I'm gonna do is that I'm just simply going to create a star and let me use auto grid for that in this case and I'm not seeing anything let me see something I cannot see anything there either so let me just simply create something here and um, well right now it doesn't matter because I'm just gonna simply go ahead take the points to four and let's play with the with the radius in here a little bit so I can get what I need actually I need it smaller way smaller I believe that's decent size and I'm just simply going to align this to the top of the table let's see the Z to the maximum apply and let's move it to the side and I thought that was gonna be enough but it's not enough so let's just simply move this up just a touch let me see still too high it with this here no sorry that's not what I wanted okay so the Z down down let me see where it disappears you can do this tons of ways I'm just doing it the the hard way in some ways just simply there you go and uh, what I'm going to do now I'm gonna center this up and let me see X and Y this away go to the top view makes things easier center up and this in here would be the center star then we're just gonna copy this up and actually copy it again down not measuring anything I'm just putting it you know just by watching it and uh, we have I just have to put two stars here I'm just gonna put one in here maybe okay and then copy it and put just half of it here because as you know we have a symmetry modifier and this is gonna be a little bit cool later on so let's just cover half of it here and then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to maybe let me see this attach this up let me see if it works as I want select the board select the uh, oh well I have to select the editable poly attach command I have a, a hotkey for that and as you can see it converts it automatically to a um, to a poly so in this case just going to select the stars maybe I can do it this way stars and sell oh well I cannot select more than that so pick it and they're all converted as you can see now what I want to do in this case is that I want to select in the object level those stars and put the ID to something different so again we're just cheating a little bit in here this is not the way that you if you're doing some professional job you should do it better um, but I'm just kind of quick on this let's put in here the pocket rubber material which is kind of black and it's gonna make it um, that they are kind of more um, jumping to the side so as you can see we have these stars already made and when we create the um, put the symmetry modifier we already did it for the whole table that is the cool part look at this in here we're gonna move this so it looks like only one and uh, I believe the reflectance of this particular material is too high is that black or red in there not sure what I'm seeing in here so oh okay the thing is that it was selected of course it was red so let me get rid of this and let's see how that looks 
is looking quite okay for what I think. Let me see something. I believe the selection is still no, it's not using soft selection, but for some reason I have these colors in here. Let me go out of this, select these two out, and good. So now we're looking at this the correct way. Let me go ahead, turn on the symmetry modifiers. Let me see. Maybe just this one. And Editable Poly, select uh, this particular object, and let me turn on this in here, and let's just simply move it until it welds in some way. So we have a nice star in there. Yeah. Pretty easy, huh? Now, what I'm going to add in here on the front is this particular entrance that we have for when the bolts enter the pockets, then they come out, um, you know, in the front, so you can pick them up and continue playing later on. So what I'm going to do on this case is that I'm going to go to the top and apply an edit poly modifier on top of this. And again, I don't just simply convert something to editable poly right away. I just simply go ahead and stack another edit poly on the top to make sure that I I'm doing, you know, um, how I need it. So right now, this whole thing is an editable poly. And at this point, what I'm going to do, let me see if an inset on this will work as I want. Seems to be. But why don't we actually do it this way? We select the borders. Mm, I select one that I didn't want to select. Let's put it like this, making sure that I'm selecting what I need. And let's just choose connect. The cool part is that remember that this is kind of a when you select four borders, it just gets both lines. You don't have to put two lines in this case. Um and they're not straight, so let's just simply go ahead and select one. Select the scale command on the X axis. And actually let me show this in here. So in general, as I picked four borders, it created two lines instead of only one, which is kind of cool because sometimes you should use the the connect with two two lines itself. So right now, I believe we have what I'm going to be using to just simply extrude in, um, maybe a little bit smaller. So I select these three borders, uh, so three ed edges in here. And as you can see, it only makes one line. So I'm just simply gonna go ahead and create a connecting here with the dialog, and we have two lines. Pinch them out. I believe that is okay. Now we're gonna select these two polygons and extrude them in. So just making a quick thing here. Let me check that I'm not passing. Oh well, that doesn't matter. It seems to be so. Um, very good. And just to add the touch, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to select this particular edge here, make a ring selection to get all the borders that are around. Like, as you can see, it selected all the borders around. So, right now I'm just going to connect that, and it's going to make two two connections because that's what we did before but no I just need no not that I need the connect only one because what I'm gonna do with this particular line is that I'm gonna just move it forwards yeah like that select this particular polygon in here and make a loop selection uh huh that is weird that's not what I was expecting so let me put this like this. Let me see something. I have shaded um hardware shaded view and that makes the polygons to look like yellow. It seems to be that it was not that. But again, let me just simply select this and loop it and extrude it just a little bit so I can get what I need. 
Epa. By local number. It is extruding out just a touch, maybe a little bit less. 0.6 will be fine. And with all of that, we're just going to go ahead, select this. Oh, hold on, cancel. Uh -huh. That is okay. You have to apply those things now. And convert to edge. Oh, convert to edge, I said. Let me see. Here. That is better. Maybe they select these edges in there. I don't need them. Because I'm what I'm gonna do in this case is that I'm gonna chamfer that up again as I did with the pocket corners. You see that? Yep. So let's chamfer that up. Let's add some segments and again I think we have something selected that I don't want. Those corners in there are going to make that the chamfer, it doesn't matter how many how many segments I add, it is just simply going to um, make them um, straight even though we have that um, when we're trying to make a rounded corner in here so let's just chamfer further up and again this kind of things if you're actually working with a, with a turbo smooth already you know everything is already smoothed out but let's just go ahead and you know do it this way I'm thinking that there are some corners around that I do not want to select but that they are selected nonetheless seems to be so let's do it manually this one this one this one and that one and then loop let's see chamfer oh well let's not do that then it is fine he wins let's just simply going to select these polygons around here and make I believe let me see yeah let's just change their material IDs to the black again oops let me see that loop okay now this in here I want to actually do it as well sorry that was not the selection that I wanted to do but here okay yeah the whole thing has to be I'm gonna put it in the black so when we look at it and it seems to have changed the material ID to number 5 and that's not what I wanted I wanted to change it to number 4 here this is what we get let me see that these two I want to also change them oops did I do a mistake it seems to be that I didn't so right now you cannot see that correctly because we have the other light on but as you can see we have this kind of entrance there maybe with a little bit more work I should actually in general I just wanted to do it you know a little quick entrance there but maybe the color is too dark what we should do is just put another material to it but that would take a little bit more time so let's leave it like that very quickly in the meantime let's talk about um, another detail that it is just for fun that we're gonna create in here and as you can see I'm actually using the rubber material for a lot of things just to add a different color if you just want to take your time and put something else then just go ahead and do it that way you know you just put another color into it um, but in here it's just for demonstration purposes that you know we can do the things very quickly so right now let me just simply select the edit poly to get out of it we have now this particular table with um, everything set up the main things already done so let me add 
two basics, um, two things, two things that are not needed. But it is just to add a little bit of style in there. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna import a file that I already did. Those are some paths that we're gonna be using for this, and actually two things. First, those paths I'm I'm gonna create a tutorial about how to create quick paths out of very complicated images and um, second all these files of course are included in the tutorial files so let me get this from uh, the files that I was working on already um, before I created the table I actually of course worked on it and there are some shapes that I want to get from here let me get this shape here I just want to merge it and uh, the other one is actually almost in the same file it's actually as you can notice actually I when I create something when I'm actually building something I save it by numbers and as and that is very good because I can access uh, I can access different times of the um, of um, the same file in which I had different objects and stuff and that is cool and um, in this case it's telling me that one of the material names is actually um, has the same name so let me use scene material and um, as you can see I have two objects in here I have this particular tribal sign and you're gonna see later on what from where I got them and in here kind of a dragon shape which is kind of a cool one. Let me select it and move it to the side just a touch and it's actually yeah, well placed. Good. So right now this particular dragon let me see this. The dragon right now I want to attach it to the pool. No, actually not align it. Let me well let me align the the X and Y positions to the center. And then um I'm going to select um the dragon or let me select the pay the table and add uh, attach in this case let me well not able to do any of them. Let me oh seems to be that I already attach it. <laughs> yeah the things that sometimes I don't even notice that I did some things so in this case I believe it is attached already let me see that edit poly and yes it seems to be that I have it selected let me go out of this yes I can see that it is selected here and let me see select faces and yes so let me go ahead select these faces in here actually I don't know why it split it when I attached it so in this case it is a kind of tedious work now because I have to select each of them or just go back in time and actually in here there's an option that you just simply go to the to the one that you wanted. So I select the the table. Nope. Let me select the dragon. Let's do it the other way around. Let me select mm, go out of it. Select the dragon. Attach the table. Oh, sorry. So select dragon. Dragon. Attach table. And let's see now if this is yeah, it divides it again. So well work has to be done so let's just go ahead select those up and there's some let's just go ahead select those up and there's some tiny little thingies around so again I'm gonna explain first from where from where I got them and second um, I like to mention that I will make a tutorial on how to create this kind of shapes you can see that it is basically a spline it was basically a spline and I will explain because this particular dragon is kind of a very difficult spline to make, right? So 
in this case I'm going to explain exactly how to create this kind of very complicated shapes in less than 10 minutes you don't need too much time for doing this thing so I have it selected and I'm going to go ahead and change the material ID to again the pocket so let me see rubber pocket the uh, pocket rubber sorry 